about uh, two decades ago in India, in, my, in the village where I was born, in one summer evening, I was playing cricket. In most of the people in India play only cricket, you know that well, right? I was playing cricket in the fields and I saw a farmer sitting at a distance and eating something from the ground. I walked up to him to see what he was eating and I was astonished to see that he was eating mud. It was soft mud from the stream that he was eating. I was angry, upset, helpless, clueless. I kind of asked him, what the hell is this mud eating business? And he replied, quite helplessly looking into my eyes, saying, my stomach doesn't know that my pocket is empty. It took me a few days to recover from what I saw. A few days later, I spoke about this with my grandfather. He was a well-learned man. I mean, he was a part of Indian freedom struggle led by Mahatma Gandhi. And when I shared this with him, he said, this is not new. This happened quite a lot of times. And he said, when you see something like this, your reaction is to fight. I said, yes, that's exactly what I'm like, you know, mid-teens, yeah. what else do you expect? He said, that fighting business is over. Now, if you're talking about something that has to be done, you need to think about solving it. And to solve, you need to know the root cause. A few years later, I was working with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, I quit my job in my early 20s to start farming because I did not know what causes farming farmers to be so poor. Those who produce food, how the hell can they eat mud? I mean, how can they be so poor? How can they lose money? So I started farming in one of the most drought-prone areas uh, in India to actually live the life of a farmer with my co-founders. Fakir Appa is one of the farmers we worked with. He was a neighbor. He also supplied his farm equipment to us for us to do our work. Initially, he laughed at us. What are these guys who come in a car, who wear a hat, who eat a very different food? What are they doing in these villages? But soon, Fakir Appa actually started seeing that we were tilling the land, sowing the seeds, taking the harvest to the market, sometimes making money, sometimes losing money, essentially living off grid. So kind of entire life cycle of what it takes to be a farmer. And he started opening up. We started understanding greater realities of what farming today feels like. My dear friends, the farmers who probably have very less to contribute to the amount of climate change, what we're talking about today, have existential crisis. Nothing short of that. Just one unseasonal rain, one pest, and their entire annual income is lost. Unacceptable at many levels. So after this, we understood that we need to work with farmers to make sure that the farm incomes become climate resilient. And we are talking about more than 100 million households just in India and about 500 million households across the world. This is not a small number, right? And they need to have climate resilient incomes. So that got us started to think about Kheti. So Kheti is an idea which started to address three things. How do we get climate resilient income? What, which means that farmers need to have more income, more as in by talking, my co-founders and I spoke to more than uh, close to 1,000 families, farmer farming families over six months to understand that an additional 800 to $1,000 of household income for these families is a game changer. So how do we get an additional 800 to $1,000 of income to those households, how do we make that reliable and more regular? It can't be once in eight months or nine months. It has to be more regular. And when we looked around, as I said, the farmers had a typical land holding of about two to three acres of land. And given that we have these 100 million of these just in India, 
said, how do we make sure that these, these farmers get the right amount of climate protection? When we started this journey towards you know, exploring technologies, we came across greenhouses, which existed in the world for a lot of time. Of course, not to grow tomatoes in uh, winters, but to grow tomatoes in sizzling hot Indian summers. So we realized that greenhouses are super expensive. They're in industrial size. They uh, are about uh, you know, $60,000 as an entry point, which smallholder farmer who barely makes $800,000 per year can afford a greenhouse, which provides climate protection. So that's when we said, we need to reimagine this uh, climate smart farming for our farmers and for all of us. So long story short, our target was to get an asset which is affordable enough to, uh, you know, for a smallholder farmer to take it. And today, happy to share with you that the greenhouse is no longer a $60,000 asset. It starts with $800 for the smallholder farmers to afford it. And it is not just to grow exotic vegetables. It is to grow the food which the local communities eat. 20 plus varieties of vegetables which the local communities eat. The local nutrition improves. And all this keeping in mind that the incomes of these farmers have to kind of go 2x, have to be doubled with this technology which sits in one-tenth of an acre, uses 2% water compared to what is used in open field farming, producing five to seven times more food. All this was too good to be true. And thanks to thousands of farmers today who are using this technology, this is becoming more and more real. Happy to share with you that towards end of 2022, Kheti, our innovation, was awarded with a prestigious Earthshot Prize by the Royal, thank you, by the Royal Foundation of UK, where we are one of the top, uh, we are one of the five uh, winners of uh, this award. We really owe it to a lot of our farmers. This sounds great, building a solution to, yeah. building a solution which can double farm incomes is great. But if I look at the reality of smallholder farmers, if it is an $800,000 asset, it is still almost 100% of their annual income. How can they afford it unless there is a, an access to financing or subsidy? It's so difficult for them to afford it. In 2015, when we started Kheti, I thought we could reach a million farmers by 2020. Well, maybe that was my underestimation of problem or overestimation of our ability. But well, we changed the goal post 2025, then to 2030. Part of it is attributable to our underestimation, but part of it is the complex ecosystem in which we operate. I personally interacted with more than 20 bankers, 30 plus government officials, and we even signed seven agreements to scale this uh, innovation, which sounds like a no-brainer. It has to work. It's great for the farmers, great for the environment. It should work. But the system is filled with friction. So the bureaucracy must work with and work for the farmers to make this change. Drip irrigation, which is another comparable uh, technology, even today after four decades of their existence in India, reached reaches one out of five farmers. And it is a line item in the federal budget. That is when it reaches one out of five farmers. Imagine, had that not happened, today it would have been a negligible decimal which wouldn't have been worth any mention. So scaling right innovations requires government priority, policy, and subsidy. By becoming a farmer, I understood the root cause of farm failure and we started building Kheti as a solution to address that. By building Kheti as an entrepreneur, I understood the scaling challenges with bureaucracy. I want to remind everybody of something extraordinary that Mahatma Gandhi said. Be the change that you want to see. Forever we can complain that governments don't get it. Forever we can complain that governments don't align their right efforts towards this. Or we can work with them and make the change happen. I want to invite you 
today into this idea. An idea which can be a game changer in our climate journey. It's an idea to create a platform where proven climate solutions get to scale rapidly through the government ecosystem. It is not because of government's intent alone. It is not because of government's budgets alone. It is because a lot of times is innovations do not reach government in the packaging, in the way, in, way, in the timing, packaging with the, the, to the person who actually can take a decision. So we want to create a platform like this. And I want to invite you into this. And my friends, it's not just about blaming anybody. It's about co-creating. It's about listening. It's about understanding and making sure that the solution which needs to reach last mile does reach the last mile the fastest. I want to leave you with a thought. I want climate change and the climate crisis to be a solved problem in my lifetime. I want this to be a solved problem in my lifetime. And we can make that happen only if we come together and make it happen through the government action. Because if without government support we can do X, with government support we can do 100X or more. If this idea excites you, happy to talk to you more. Thank you very much.